Assalamu alaikum everyone. Today I have an amazing science activity kit for you. Ah! It is the Exploring Outer Space. Eight fascinating activities to explore the mysteries of the universe. Ooh. Here's the box. And here is the back. I'll show you up close. This fantastic kit includes eight fascinating activities that all teach about and explore the mysteries of the universe. You can discover dazzling star constellations in the sky, see how moon craters are formed, and build a great glow-in-the-dark model of the solar system. So prepare for your journey out of this world. Oh my god, that's convenient. Here is the booklet. So the first one is the planet flashcards. Yep, they're here. You can see it's packed, nicely sealed. Second is the super solar system. Uh, star patterns. That's number three. Number four is thrilling telescope. It's here. Orbit spinning. It's this, it's this bottle with a ball in it. Not a ball, a marble. Oh, they've given marbles. Okay, then the sixth one is the moon craters. You'll need the tray. So, this tray is plastic. That's awesome. Then, seventh one is the balloon rocket. Balloons and some string. What else? Plastic tube. This is the plastic tube right here. So that's for that. Uh, eighth one is the temperature flux. We need two beakers. So these are the two beakers. Oops. Let me open it. And what is this for? And then we have notes. I think this one is all. Wait. Kiss cheese kili tha. Oh, acha. Uh, this one is for the star patterns. Yay! So we unboxed all of it. Number one, planet flashcards. What you have, planet flashcards. So in the kit, we have this packet here. So take out the planet flashcards. We took them out. They tell you interesting things about the sun and the eight planets that travel around it. Observe the appearance of each planet. Also, try to arrange the cards in the order of distances from the sun. So let's open it. There's tape at the back. Ooh, nice. Let me show you up close. Which planet do you find the most interesting? Uh, try to arrange the cards in the order of distance from the sun. Sun closest to the sun. I'm just, I'm doing it as I remember it. Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars. Venus, Earth, Mars. Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus or Neptune, Nept uh, Uranus, Neptune, and then Pluto, poor Pluto, yay, let me see if this is correct, yes, it's correct. So because of the facts and stuff written on here, 
You can also challenge your friend's knowledge of the solar system using these cards. Explanation, please. A solar system is a star with planets and other objects orbiting or spinning around it. Our solar system consists of the Earth and seven other planets that spin around the Sun, the star. Other objects found in our solar system include asteroids, meteorites, and comets. If you check out the radius on the cards, you will know that Jupiter is the biggest planet. You can check here. While Mercury is the smallest planet. Ooh, okay. Besides that, distance from the sun tells you that Mercury is the closest to the sun and Neptune is the furthest away, as shown using these cards. So everyone, that concludes our first Planet Flashcards experiment. Super solar system, yay! Which was this over here. Oh, it's glow in the dark. Okay. I have to find the black light because it's somewhere. Okay, what you have is a solar system model and flashcard. Uh, yeah, we did the flashcards previously. Carefully remove the planet pieces and assemble them. Wait, let me get the Genji. I'm back. Okay, let's cut this open. Okay, here we are. And here are the instructions. Okay, so this globe is the sun. It comes out very easy, by the way, so no problem. And you have to stick it between these two things here. Okay, done. It looks like a flying saucer. So this is the sun and we put it in this uh, thingy, technical term. And now, then arrange them from smallest to biggest. Attach the planets to their arms as shown in the diagram. Ooh, here. All the answers are given anyway. Assemble the dome by fitting it through the rim, as shown in the illustration A. Yes, we've already done that. A plus. Then insert the planet arms into the base. You will see in the base there are holes. Oh, can you see it? There, you can see it. At the base there are some holes, and we will attach these in these. Okay, let's start. Uh, we've already started. These uh, sticks have the name of the planets on it. This one says Jupiter, Saturn, and then Neptune. Yay! Oh, now we have to put in the planets. Again, I don't know if you can see it. There it says Mercury, Mars. We already took out the sun. Okay, last one is Saturn. Done. Okay, let's fix Saturn together. Yay! Place the solar system model under a light for a while and take the model to a dark place and watch it glow. Try to identify the planets based on their distances from the sun. Use the flashcards to help you with this. Yeah, we can do that. So we're just putting some light on it because that's what they told us to do in the instructions. And then I'm going to switch off the light. Oh, I can't see anything. Okay, everyone. So for the black light, I'm using the mosquito killer. So everyone, here it is under black light. It looks so gorgeous. 
So now I have cranked up the ISO of the camera and now I'm going to switch it off at the UV light and then we'll see if this glows nicely. And where is it? Whoa! Solar system. Yeah, that's gorgeous. Explanation, please. The solar system model contains a special substance that radiates visible light after being energized by ultraviolet light. What? Oh, okay. It's talking about why it's actually glowing in the dark. So, this thing over here contains a special substance that radiates visible light after being energized by UV light, ultraviolet light. That is why it glows in the dark after you have put it under a light source for some time. The dome in the middle of the base features the sun in our solar system. Uh, yes, we already know. With the help of the flashcards, you should be able to name the planets around it. Yay, we memorized them by now. Alhamdulillah. So that concludes our activity number two. Activity number three. Star patterns. Ooh, interesting. What you have, cone-shaped pattern. There you can see it. Uh, star maps. Star maps. Here they are. They've given two. So here is the southern region. And here is the northern region. What you need? Flashlight, scissors, sticky tape. Okay, I have them. Let's try this. Cut out the cone shape pattern. So let's cut it out. This will out of my game. It's cut. Uh, this flap is folded and tape the sides together. Ask an adult to help you poke some small holes on the cone. I'll poke the holes first and then tape it. Okay, for the hole poking, we'll use some needles. Okay, so I poked some holes, you can see it. And now we will tape it together. Tape it on the inside, so it looks neat. Yay, it's complete. Okay, turn off all lights in the room. Okay, I'll just have to wait for the night. Hold the flashlight underneath the cone and turn it on. So basically, this is what you're doing. And the one in the middle. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Yes, it's night time, the time you've been waiting for. <laughs> so here we have a dark room. So now the next part of the experiment, we're supposed to do the dark room part, right? Ooh, the flashlight I'm using, this flashlight is amazing. It's this one. It's really amazing. It's my dad's. He... Thanks, dad. So turn off all lights in the room. Hold a flashlight underneath the cone. And it's on. Watch how star patterns project onto the ceiling or wall. Okay everyone, so we saw the star patterns form. Um, Take out the star maps and study interesting constellations or star patterns that may be visible in our sky. I did for the northern region. Like I could say Leo, Leo Minor. There's Gemini, there's Lynx, there's Draco, Hercules, and a bunch of others. And in the southern region, there was Pisces, Sagittarius, Scorpius, Lupus, Hydra, Chameleon, Mensa, the genius organization, okay. Pretty cool. Indus, yay, Pakistan. Phoenix, Mimosa, Hater. So everyone, we did the whole constellation thing here. And we studied the maps. 
So, explanation please for what's going on here. Well, it's pretty simple. When you shine the flashlight from underneath the paper cone, some of the light rays are blocked, while others can pass through the tiny holes, creating spots of light that look like stars. A star is a huge body of very hot glowing gas. Stars produce their own light. They are there in the sky, both day and night. But we can only see them when the sky is dark. A constellation is a group of stars. They are often named after animals or mythological characters. Activity number four. Thrilling telescope. It is. This is it. Ooh, we just have to assemble it. So follow the illustration above and assemble the telescope. Here it is. Alrighty. So this is the stand it's going to go on. And then for this stand we have this. Oops. This thing of a dick right here technical term. So that's out of the way. Wow, I'm making so much progress. And done! Study the structure of the Hubble Space Telescope. Flip open the telescope and look into it from the narrow end. See how it magnifies distant objects. Okay, opening it up. Explanation, please. Oops, sorry, telescope. So the Hubble Space Telescope is a powerful telescope that gives us sharp images of outer space. It is named after a famous astronomer called Edwin Hubble who made important discoveries about astronomy. Wow. The telescope was put into orbit in 1990 by the Space Shuttle Discovery. Further missions to repair and improve the performance of the telescope in later years have made it an even more effective instrument. Images taken by this telescope have helped scientists obtain a better image and understanding of planets and our galaxies. And our galaxy, not galaxies. Activity number five, orbit spinning. Looks pretty simple, I mean. So in this packet, we have uh, an orange bottle and marbles. We just need one. What you have is a bottle and marble. 
Let's try this. Drop the marble in the bottle and turn it upside down. Okay. Ooh, what happened? The marble drops out of it. Ooh, that's diagram A. Now, repeat the previous step. Bottle, marble, but this time keep swirling the bottle and the marble within it. Ooh, what's gonna happen? marble is not dropping out. Watch how the whirling marble stays inside the bottle even when it is turned upside down. And as soon as I stop, it drops out. Explanation please. When you spin the bottle, the marble is pulled away from the neck of the bottle to its side by a force called centrifugal force. Yeah, it doesn't go to the neck. It's staying here. Centrifugal force is the force that tries to make a moving object continue to move in a straight line. Okay. I thought we were going round. The marble, when being spun, wants to travel in a straight line, but since the side of the bottle keeps it in place, it keeps rotating around instead. Oh, okay, I got it now. Planets orbit around the sun in a similar way. Without any force, the planets which rotate on their own axes would have moved in a straight line. But with the sun's gravity and force, planets spin around an invisible path called orbit around the sun. Number six, moon craters, yes. What you have is a flat tray and marbles. Uh, where are the marbles? You marbles. Here are the marbles, I have to open them. Okay, marble out. Uh, what you need flour newspaper. So let's try this cover your tabletop with some old newspaper I'm going to use this rug Place the tray on top and add flour to it until it is almost full Okay Don't waste it. We'll make parhatas later <laughs> Okay, is that enough? No, I think it's saying till it's full Okay Smooth the top of the flower by gently pressing on it or using a spoon. Okay, we need to smooth it out. I don't have anything to smooth it out. Let me just smooth it out like this. Hold the marble about waist high and drop it into the tray. Ew, waist high. Okay, uh, I'll stand up and then I'll drop it. There, I'm waist high. Whoa! <laughs> This is so much fun. There you have a moon crater. There it is. So this one I dropped from this distance. You know, this, the, the shorter distance is giving a neater crater. And the higher the distance is, it's giving a rough crater. So we dropped it from different heights or use other small objects like a small rock, coin, or even a grape. Uh, don't have those things right now. Wait, I think I might have a rock or something. Let me get the rock. Okay, now we're gonna use small objects like a small rock. Okay, here we have different sizes of rock. I think let's go for big, medium, and small. Okay, and then we'll see what kind of craters they, these create. Ew. Now, if you notice, it's not making a greater crate like the marble did. It just disturbed the dust. Okay, now I'll do it from this height, from the camera height. Let's smooth it out. And action! Ooh!
Okay, this one kind of made a dent. So yeah, same thing. Uh, just disturbing the flower and not actually creating any crates. Okay, the next thing they said. Now they're saying use a coin. Aha! Here in my hand, I have one rupee, two rupees, five rupees, one big, one small, and ten rupees. Now we'll drop them from different heights. Let's start. First, from the waist high, one rupee. This is two. This is five, the small one. Uh, this is five, the big one. This is ten. Let's see the results. Okay, on closer inspection, one the one rupees. No, not so much. Cause it's very it's a very light coin. Okay, the two rupees. Kind of, not that much. The five rupees small one. Yeah, it did make a dent because it's slightly heavy. And then the five rupees big one. Ooh, yep, a deeper indent. And the ten rupees I think was the heaviest, and that made a deeper crater. So, what's the explanation? From a distance, the moon looks round and smooth. But in fact, the surface of the moon is covered with billions of holes or craters. This means that the moon's surface is actually rugged. Most of these craters were formed by collisions between the moon and other objects such as the meteorites, asteroids, or comets. Chunks of space rocks have been striking the moon's surface for many thousands of years. Without water and wind to smooth out these bumps, the craters remain in place once they are formed. Number seven, balloon rocket. Ooh, what you have, long balloons. String, a plastic tube. What you need is tape, clip, chairs, balloon pump, optional. Okay, let's try this. So everyone, I got the tape. Here's the tape. A balloon pump. And a clamp. Let's start. So first of all, Let's untangle the string. Oh, I also got two chairs. They're here. Let's take out the balloon. That's a long balloon. Ow! Blow up a long balloon and clip it to keep the air in. Don't burst. <laughs> Can you see it? I'm gonna keep it this size. Okay, it's clapped. Now we take the straw and we tape it. There, that's taped. Okay, take the straw and then put it through the tube, the plastic tube. Uh, tie the ends of the string to two chairs or objects for far apart. Well, they can't be far apart because I want to show it in the camera. Okay, let's tie it. There it is. You can see it tied. Okay, this will be the starting point. So make the balloon here. Okay, I have the stopwatch ready. With the balloon's neck near one end of the chair, release the balloon. So there's the balloon. I'm going to release it by unclapping it. Find out how long it takes your balloon rocket to reach the destination, which is like that side. How long will it take? Okay, let's start. Bismillah. short distance so obviously it's gonna take less time so explanation please your balloon rocket is powered by air and demonstrates the law of Sir Isaac Newton Ooh. according to this famous scientist 
For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. The backward push of the air escaping from the balloon provides your rocket with thrust to propel forward. Number eight, temperature flux. Now this is a very simple uh, activity, very quick activity. What you have, two beakers, the last thing left in this bag. Here are the two beakers. What you need is aluminum foil, which I have here, and some water. So here are the two beakers, it's 60 ml uh, to the top approximately. Let's try this, half fill the two beakers with water. So we'll fill it both with 30 ml of water. So we fill them both equally with 30 ml of water. Wrap one of the beakers in aluminum foil completely. Check that the shiny side faces outwards. So we're going to leave one uncovered and one covered in aluminum foil. Completely cover it. And one is uncovered. Then what? Place both beakers under the sun for 15 minutes. We have some um, direct sunlight. There you go, 15 minutes. Starting. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. minutes are up now let me go get those two beakers and we'll see what happens so everyone here are the two beakers remember this uh, activity is the temperature flux activity so unwrap the beaker and place your finger inside both beakers to see if you can feel the difference in temperature which one is higher so I'll open this And then simultaneously, I'll stick my finger in to check which one is higher. Woo! What do you think? Well, you guessed right, because you're smart cookies. The temperature in the open beaker should be higher. This is because the shiny side of the foil reflects much of the sunlight, while the open beaker absorbs all the heat. The water, insulated from the heat outside by the aluminum foil, remains cooler inside the wrapped beaker. The temperature could be extremely high or low in outer space. It is important for spacecraft and astronauts to be protected by special materials that help to prevent extreme heat or coldness. Yay! Well done you guys! Give yourselves a round of applause! one that concludes the outer space fun activity pack all eight activities have been done yay alhamdulillah so everyone if you really enjoyed watching this video please don't forget to like subscribe constructive comments and share this video i really appreciate it and so will the young scientists as always thank you so much for the support and encouragement thanks for watching until next time allah hafiz Bye.